I'm scared. I don't know if I want to do this. Yesterday, I flew across the country from New York to Reno, Nevada, and today was the day of my very first, very big road trip alone. Hi. Uh, I just picked up my rental car. Let's get out of here and I will tell you all what's happening, what we're doing, and all of that. Before we hit the road, I've got to be honest, my family was freaking out because I totally kept them in the dark about the road trip. I'm on hold with JetBlue. If you watched my June vlog, you'll know that because I had a special ticket with JetBlue, I had to fly where they had space available and the flights to Portland were filled. JetBlue finally answered. They have no flights out of Port out of JFK to Portland. Nothing's available for the way I'm booking, like nothing. Reno was the closest city they could get me to that had rental cars so I could eventually make it to Portland. And I had always wanted to go to Reno anyways, so I said yes to this wild solo adventure. I'm scared. I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know how to drive this big car. It's so big and like, I'm just kind of freaking out. Okay, I know this seems dramatic, but between my family telling me not to do this, me having never done a road trip before, and not having driven at all since last summer, this was really real for me. Okay. I don't have a choice. I've got to get to Portland, unless I just want to fly. I can just cancel the reservation and Okay. Guys, I'm so scared. It's so big. Okay, so I made it to Walmart. I just got a car charger so I could, you know, regular charger, but to plug into the car. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm, I feel like I shouldn't have done this. I just feel like I got excited about the first trip out of COVID, like I just shouldn't be doing this. Like I just got too excited about everything and the opportunity to like actually go somewhere and do something. And now I'm starting with to bend. Like we're going to Bend, Oregon. We're in Reno. This morning I had a really nice morning. I literally missed it. I missed the bus because I was across the street at the wrong stop and I actually watched it go by, which was so painful in the moment, but looking back, I have to admit is kind of funny. I walked to another bus stop for a bus that I think left early. <sighs> to another bus stop, which I finally did catch the bus there. It gives Colorado. I love when I start to realize what a place is and what I'm feeling is Colorado mixed with Las Vegas. Like see that art right there? That's very Rhino district of Denver. And even just the way it looks, like it really looks like, like Denver. It really looks like Colorado, but then you've got these casinos. So you really are in Las Vegas. <laughs> That's Reno. I feel like such a tourist. Oh my God, there's the sign. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so cute. I walked around, got breakfast from Two Chicks, headed back to the hotel to check out, and had them take me to the airport for my rental car. And that's how we got here. So, so hot here. I can't even explain. I do not know how these people live here. Um, but it was a really good morning. I think God's got me. I know I made a really crazy decision. Oh, wow, this is like, oh God. So yeah, we're staying at a hotel in Bend and then we're going to Portland. So this is my first ever road trip. I've never driven a car this big. And I just like, 
<laughs> I'm excited. As soon as I started driving, I got excited. But I just feel like I, I'm bad for doing this. For like, I, I don't know, I just guilt. It's major guilt for no reason. And guilt isn't allowed in this car. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna have good energy. We're gonna have a good trip. Let's do this. to go into California or something like that, you can see the wildfires. I'm still five hours away, but you can actually see the wildfires. And this is what's causing my journey to get up here really to be crazy and chaotic because look at this. There is just road closures. Uh, there's a lot of different things happening that they just can't, I guess, get through. I'm not sure exactly what's going on up here, but I, there are road closures, things changing, all because of the wildfires that are up there. And it, uh, from what I understand, they are really, really big, uh, at least over 38,000 acres at this point. Okay, update. I'm in California. Um, <sighs> had a lot of moments. I'm exhausted. I just ran into that porter potty to pee. It was absolutely disgusting in there. I am at a lake <laughs> in California. Part of me, I wouldn't even say really part of me, a lot of me wants to go eat my food in down by the lake. I think I'm gonna go down there. And speaking of food, this entire thing, I made a turn and I had this open because when we were stopped in traffic, I was gonna try to eat some, all of it fell on the car floor. All of it. I'm furious, but thankfully I was very smart and had ordered two breakfasts. So let's eat. I actually don't think you can go down there. I'm like trying to look, I think it'd be really dangerous. Okay, I'm trying to go down, try to find a good path. You can really see the water, wow. Guys, it's beautiful. And I think the camera's actually doing, you know, okay quality for, or okay justice. I could totally come down here and eat. I think you really could go all the way down. Just good luck getting back up. Do you hear that? That sound? It's like an animal. Okay, that's so scary. Why is it so loud? Did I do something? Should I not be here? Oh, there's people on a boat over there. It's just so... What's happening? I'm not like a nature person. It's just so... They're so loud. But it's beautiful, like... I can't believe this is my life. And it's just like, I just feel like I always have to fight to do everything because no one just is like understanding or okay of like who I am and what I want to do in this life and what it means. Like, it's just like, I was in the car and like, this was really a big surprise to my family and everything. I mean, you know, it wasn't my initial way of going about this trip at all, but 
you know, I'm working on being flexible and on a lot of things and on figuring out what I want in my life and like, I just feel like it's hard because every single time that I do something like this, like rent a car or anything, it's like a big problem for my family. Like they just can't, they can't get, they see me as a five year old, I guess. And that's fine when it's loving and when it's caring, but when it's don't do this, just come home. Don't take that risk, just come home. It's so dangerous, there are winding roads, there's this, there's that. It's like, this is life. Like this is literal life. And I know that I have a lot of years, you know, to get to experience everything. But it's like, I wish that I had a family that was more, I don't want them to not care, but I just want, I just want them to care so much that they're willing to see me grow, that they're willing to see me go, that they're willing to see me do cool and amazing things. I don't want a family that's like, don't, you know, like, you know, don't do this. And it's not even don't do this. It's more don't do this to us. Don't break our hearts by driving a car through California and getting to Oregon. Like, don't don't hurt us. And it's like, I'm not hurting you. You're hurting yourself by like, not being able to accept what is, right? And it's just like, I don't want to have to do these. I don't want to have to just pull things and do things without talking to them. But it's just like, I don't know how to how to have those conversations without without it being a problem. And it's just like, I'm such a good kid. I'm such a good kid. I'm such a good kid. And I do, I really do take educated risks. I take calculated risks. This is a very educated, calculated risk, right? I have a driver's license. I know how to drive. I'm fine, right? I know how to be reasonable. Like when I got the car, it, the first car that they gave me was way too big. And I was like, no, I'm not driving that. I'm sorry. Right? Like, get me a new one. Like, it's just like, you know? Like, I, I'm a good kid, I, I'm reasonable, I know how to, you know, do the right thing. I, I really do, and I show more restraint than I ever think I could. But... For them to not see that and to see me as the good kid who shouldn't get to go on trips, the good kid who should just stay home, the good kid who should just play life safe, I will never, I will never play life safe. I will never play it safe. I just won't. It's just not in my DNA. And it's not only not in my DNA, it's also my family's big on God. Like, God has not given me opportunity, literally, like, God has put up, I think, the best blocks ever from safe opportunities because they're actually not so safe. It's the risk opportunity. It's the big risk that gets you the big reward. It's the crazier things. The, 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 real, the real stuff that gets you a reward like this. It's like a breakfast taco. I am headed back to the car. We're gonna get back on the road. Bye.
a lake that I don't know the name. I need to find out the name of this lake. We'll take a screenshot. It's Lake Elmanor.